We want to thank God that the water is troubled today. What does the church say? Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that there is rejoicing in heaven over one person. Oh, Lord, the church is quiet. I said there's rejoicing in heaven over one person. What does the church say? Heaven is all over itself, over one person. Amen, everybody? Because every person that is saved, the devil is a loser again. What does the church say? So we bless the name of the Lord for those who have signed up already and those who are still to come. I want the church to continue to pray for them. What do you say? The battle, the battle is on and the devil is the devil. Amen? But God is the winner. I invite you to stand. St. John chapter 13, reading from verse 36, 14, 1 to 3. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me. You cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. John 13, 36 to 14, 1 to 3. Peter said to him, Lord, why cannot I follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him and said, will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Verse four, chapter 14, verse 1, he said, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And that I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The Lord hath already added a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy word. And therefore, on this, the final day of our meetings, I'd like to speak to you from the subject, let not your hearts be troubled. Father, one last time, we invite your presence to take over in this moment. For two weeks, oh God, we have answered uh, the call that you have placed on our hearts. God, I believe I've said everything that you have asked me to say. I believe, oh God, I've called as much as you've asked me to call. But God, I pray that should it be that I've fallen short, that the spirit of the living God will make up my deficit. So one more time, great God, one more time, speak to your children. One more time, great God, move this preacher out of the way. One more time, great God, take over this pulpit, clear your throat, and speak your mind. One more time, great God, unleash in this house the power of your spirit. One more time, great God, bind up the powers of darkness. One more time, great God, we pray that you'll show yourself mighty and show yourself strong. One more time, oh God, I pray that angels that excel in strength will come by here, great God, and, and rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. One more time, oh God, we pray that you'll come down in copious showers of Pentecostal power. One more time, oh God, I pray that you'll move between the pew and the aisle. One more time, oh God, I pray that you will visit with every worshiper. One more time, oh God, I pray that you will cast down every idol, break down every idol, cast out every foe, and in the name of Jesus, wash somebody today. But we will be whiter than snow. 
one more time, oh God, add somebody's name to the book of life. Oh, hallelujah. One more time, great God, add somebody's name to the book of life. And oh God, may the name remain there until that great day when that name comes up before you. May you be able to lift your hand and say, Father, my blood covers this one. Thank you in the name of Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It was December 2017. December 2017, probably December 26th or 27th, December 27th, December 27th, my birthday. Uh, my, my wife and I were getting ready to take a vacation across the borders in Canada. Uh, we intended to drive into Canada because my wife uh, was heavily with child at the time. Are you with me? But, but, but as prudent parents to be, we, uh, we decided that we would consult with our doctor and ensure that my wife was still okay to travel to Canada. Uh, when we got to the doctor, the doctor essentially checked, gave a clean bill of health. Of course, we didn't tell him where we were going. We just wanted to know the baby was okay. And he checked, he gave a clean bill of health. Are you still with me? And having given the clean bill of health, ladies and gentlemen, as we turned to walk out the door, the doctor tell me, said, said to us, tell me something. How is the baby doing? Has she been as active as she used to be? And my wife said, well, she's active, but not as active as she used to be. Doctor said, well, let me just make sure that she's okay. I want you to go down two doors down and have somebody make a check to ensure that she was okay. We went two doors down. Are you still with me? And when we got two doors down, we saw the countenance of the technician fell. Can I talk to you? And the technician sent back the results to the doctor, and the doctor immediately sent us to another place whose name I can't remember. And they hooked my wife up to a machine where they were there trying, sitting there to watch the heartbeat of the baby. Are you still with me? And we were told, ladies and gentlemen, that the, that the, that the omniatic fluid was low and that the baby was small. Are you still with me? And as they went through, ladies and gentlemen, the next day we went back. And all this time, we were supposed, we have already secured a vehicle just to go and pick up the vehicle to drive. But we were still going to the doctors. Amen, everybody. Now, we went there. We went back to the doctor. The doctor sent us home. And then the doctor called and sent us to the hospital. When we got to the hospital, they gave my wife an injection. That an injection, And we asked what the injection was for. They said, just in case we have to take the baby. Am I talking to you? The very next day, ladies and gentlemen, or two days later, we were in the hospital. And they decided they're going to keep her for observation. Quite frankly, we went there for observation. Two hours later, we were still there. Four hours later, we're still there observing until they got her and they took her into a room. Are you still with me? And has now moved from purely observation. We're there until midnight. We're there until the next day. Are you still with me today? Ladies and gentlemen, by about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 4.30, the next day, the doctor came in and the doctor says, Mr. and Mrs. Hill, we've got to take the baby. Man, I wanted to roll with him on the floor. Is anybody in the church with me today? Because I told him that my baby is scheduled to be born on February 21st and nobody's going to take the baby. I said, how do you plan to do it? We've got to cut your wife. That is out of the question. Am I talking to anybody in the church? That is out of the question. And man, and I went through an emotional cocktail right there. Can I talk to you? And this brother, the spirit of God came over my wife and I noticed that she became a little more calm than I was. 
help me Jesus sometimes you need to have a wife who knows how to turn you down what does the church say and so she became a little bit more calmer than I was and I gathered myself I went to the doctor I had a man-to-man -man conversation with him and he assured me that the baby's survival depends on that is anybody with me and by 5 36 January 4th 2018 my baby girl was born two pounds 11 ounces Am I talking to you? Two pounds, 11 ounces, seven weeks before her due date. So small she was, so far from her development she was that she had to remain in an incubator in the neonatal intensive care unit for all of 29 days. Am I talking to anybody in the church? The baby girl, ladies and gentlemen, that we came to observe was now in an incubator. And the only way to relate to her was to speak to her through. Can I talk to you? But ladies and gentlemen, I discovered something the day that they placed her in the incubator. I placed my finger inside and she took a hold of my finger. And she held on to my finger so strong, I told myself, this girl going to be all right. Am I talking to anybody in the church? And ladies and gentlemen, my wife remained in the hospital and each day they would wheel her in to come and see the baby and to have this bonding time and then put her back in the incubator and then had to go back to her room. And every day, ladies and gentlemen, the same process. But the time came. The time came when my wife must be discharged from the hospital. Can I talk to somebody? I said the time came when my wife must be discharged from the hospital. But she was being discharged from the hospital, but our little princess Elizabeth was not being discharged. And somebody's got to understand that we came to the hospital to have a baby and to take our baby back home. Can I talk to the church? But now they're telling us that you've got to go home without your baby. Am I talking to anybody in the church today? Ladies and gentlemen, that was a moment of distress. That was a moment of crying. That was a moment of sighing. That was a moment of pain. Is anybody in the church with me today? Because the child that we came to bring home, we now have to leave her in the hospital. Can I talk to you? And somebody have got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that we became heartbroken and heavy, disappointed and despondent. Our tears and sorrow fell. Can I talk to you? We became empty and eager. Can I talk to somebody today? And ladies and gentlemen, we have to look at our baby and we had to leave her there. But just before I turned to leave, I walked up to the incubator and I said to my baby girl, Princess, Daddy has to go now, but I give you this assurance, I will be back. Am I talking to anybody in the church? I said, I will be back. Can I talk to you? Ladies and gentlemen, it has been three and a half years. Since Jesus invited 12 men into the responsibility of discipleship, they had now formed what would become the nucleus of the Christian church. They had for three and a half years walked with him, communed with him, fellowshiped with him. They became eyewitnesses of his majesty. Their ears have heard him, their eyes have seen him, and their hands have handled him. Can I talk to you? But now, ladies and gentlemen, the time of his departure was at hand. I said the time of his departure was at hand. And so, ladies and gentlemen, on the eve of his crucifixion, he convened a holy convocation with his disciples. Is anybody with me today? And as he delivered his final address to his disciples on this fateful evening, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus counseled them and he looked at them and affectionately he addressed them in John 13 and verse 33. Jesus looked at his disciples and he said to them, my little children. I wish I had two people in the church today. I said, Jesus declared, my little children. Yet a little while, 
and I will have to go. Can I talk to you? But I tell you that I will come back again. Can I talk to the church today? Ladies and gentlemen, Peter became incredulous. Peter said, wherever you're going, I want to go. But Jesus said, you cannot go now. But let not your heart be troubled. I said, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also I stop by to tell you that Jesus had to leave his disciples in this world but he gave them the blessed assurance I will come back to get you and somebody has got to understand ladies and gentlemen that Jesus came to save his children, to redeem them from a world of sin. But he must leave the redeemed in a world of sin and go back to glory. Can I talk to you? But I'm so thankful today that when he left them to go back to glory, he didn't leave them on their own. He gave them the blessed assurance. He said to them, I will come back. Is anybody in the church with me? Ladies and gentlemen he said to them let not your heart be troubled there'll be some challenges down here but do not allow this reality to cause you to be distressed do not allow yourself to become afraid do not allow yourself to be agitated do not be thrown off by my absence because I will come again can I talk to you and this truth ladies and gentlemen has been and remain the blessed hope of the Christian church I said this remains the blessed hope of the Christian church that irrespective of what we encounter down here on earth this world is not our home we are just passing through and our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue and every difficulty we experience every challenge we go through I still hear Jesus tell somebody I will come back to get you is anybody in the church with me let not your heart be troubled people may not believe it but let not your heart be troubled there'll be ambivalence there'll be reticence there will be resistance there will be pessimism there will be skepticism there will be fear on unbelief is anybody in the church with me in fact in the last days you're gonna have some scoffers i say you're gonna have some scoffers saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep we heard that he was coming and he has not come yet but then i hear jesus said i'd rather not the death of a sinner but that all should come to repentance and though it may be long jesus is coming again yeah. ladies and gentlemen i stop by to tell you that there are those in the world who do not believe it there are those in the world who do not care about it. Is anybody in the church with me? But perhaps it is because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men all that God has prepared for them who love him. But as for the rest of us, ladies and gentlemen, like Abraham, we look for a city. I said we look for a city that hath foundation whose builder and maker is God is anybody in the church with me today yet this world is not your home we are just passing through in fact Peter told me that the world as it is today is being reserved by God for fire on the judgment day is anybody with me today we are leaving this world and Jesus is is coming again yeah. ladies and gentlemen as we got ready to leave the hospital can I talk to the church I said as we got ready to leave our baby girl in the NICU and we're about to walk through the door 
with our heads down and our hearts even lower. Can I talk to you? With our depression and with our fears. Can I talk to you? Because we had to leave our child in the care of strangers. And as caring and as professional as the NICU staff was, there is nobody that can take care of my child like I can. Can I talk to the church today? But ladies and gentlemen, we had to leave her there. But as we were leaving, the nurse called us over. And the nurse said, mom and dad we've got something to show you they said what is it they said I want to introduce you to something that is called the Nick view oh help me Jesus I said what do you mean by the Nick view she said if you look at your baby's incubator there is a little camera can I talk to the church I said there's a little camera at the incubator the purpose of the camera the camera is set, is checked into a software system we're going to give you a password can I talk to the church and anywhere you are you can check into the system and you can watch your baby you can see everything the baby is doing in that moment my heart was made glad I said my heart was made glad is anybody with me today because I can watch my baby from where I am I stop by to tell you today that when Jesus left this earth he did not leave you comfortless I said he did not leave you comfortless he said I'm gonna send another comforter his name is the Holy Spirit and when the Spirit of God comes he will lead you into all truth can I talk to somebody today I said Jesus may be gone but there's an unseen eye watching you and his name is the Spirit of God every step you take every move you make every word you speak every place you go go the spirit of the living God encampeth can I talk to you today I said the spirit of the living God remains with you and if the spirit is not enough the angels of the Lord I said the angels of the Lord encampeth round about you can I talk to somebody today I said the angels of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them can I talk to you God has not left you comfortless he has sent you another comforter and though he may not be here can I talk to you today he can see you can I talk to somebody he watches over you he protects you he guides you he leads you everywhere you go the spirit of the living God is speaking to you every decision you make the spirit impresses upon you don't go there don't do that is anybody in the church with me they gave me ladies and gentlemen access to my child that I may be able to see her from wherever I was and don't fool yourself ladies and gentlemen we made good use don't fool yourself is anybody in the church i said we make good use of the system sometimes we have things to do and weren't doing a thing we just sat there we went into the system and we're watching our baby is anybody in the church and the good thing ladies and gentlemen they told us that not only can you watch but if you watch and you have a concern you can pick up your phone and call the NICU and say to the NICU I have a concern well you know that I'll, I always had a concern <laughs> is anybody in the church with me today ladies and gentlemen every now and again I looked and I saw and I picked up my phone and I said to them Elizabeth has been laying in that same spot for the past five minutes Am I talking to anybody in the church? I think it is time that you turn her in another position. All right, daddy, we'll do it. Can I talk to the church? I called them back. I said, I think her bed is too flat. Maybe you need to tilt it up a little so that she can breathe. Can I talk to you? 
I called them. I said they gave them the little time overhead. I called. I said, I think the time is too far in her face. She cannot see. They said, Daddy, she's sleeping. I said, the time is still too far. Is anybody in the church with me today? Every now and again, I pick up my phone and I call. I want the church to understand that God has children in this earth. And every now and again, ladies and gentlemen, he picks up the divine phone and he dialed down here and he said, don't touch my children. That load is too heavy. That is too strong. That is too hard. Is anybody in the church with me today? The devil can touch you without permission from God because God, ladies and gentlemen, is always watching you. God has got some private eyes down here. Am I talking to anybody in the church? Always watching you. When he can't be here, his eyes are up on you. And when the devil comes in like a flood. I said when the enemy comes in like a flood. I hear Jesus say to him, come here for a moment. Where do you think you're going? He said, I'm going down to see Jackson. He said, let me see what you have to give Jackson. Jesus takes it. He said, this is too heavy for Jackson. This is too much for Jackson. I'm going to pare it down. I'm going to wait. Can I talk to the church and fit it? Now you can go to Jackson. There is no challenge that takes you that don't come through God first. Is anybody in the church with me today? God ensures that whatever difficulty you face, he weighs it, he measures it, and he ensures that you can handle it. Am I talking to anybody in the church? God does not leave you comfortless. Is anybody with me? And watch me. Sometimes he doesn't even wait. He just gives you the strength to manage it. I wish I had a church in the house. Is anybody in the church with me? I said he just gives you the strength to manage it. So you don't need to tell God what you cannot do. Because I can do all things. I said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't tell God how difficult it is. Tell your difficulty how good God is. Is anybody in the church with me today? Yes, I can serve him. Yes, I can live right. Yes, I can live good. Yes, I can live righteously and godly in this present world because God will not put more on me than I can bear. We like to tell God how difficult it is. Is anybody in the church with me? But God does not give you what you can handle. Am I talking to somebody in the church? There's nothing that happens to you in this world that God is not aware of it first. Am I talking to anybody in the church? I said there's nothing that happens that God is not aware of it first. And so ladies and gentlemen, he guides your steps. He leads you. He directs you. And every decision you make, the spirit of God is there to tell you whether or not it is the right decision. Because Jesus says, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to send you a comforter and he's going to lead you in the right direction. And every day, can I talk to you? Every day we went to the NICU. Every day we went to the NICU for 29 days. Am I talking to anybody in the church? And we got to go and visit our baby. And we go and visit our baby for a few hours. The time has come where you got to go home. And every day you got to go. And then you got to go home. And leave her there. Is anybody in the church with me? I got to go home and leave her there. Because they told me, you can't take her home yet. Because she needs some more maturity. Oh, you're not with me. You're quiet. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I said she needs some more maturity. She needs to be developed a little bit more. She can't manage the environment yet. Is anybody in the church? You see, you don't know that Jesus is ready to take you home. But you can't go home yet. Because you're not mature enough, I wish I had. Help me, Jesus. Am I talking to anybody in the church? They need a little bit more development. 
you need a little bit more growth can I talk to the church you need to stop giving people a piece of your mind am I talking to anybody in the church today you still have not grown yet you still have not developed yet you need have some bad habits that you still need to be conquered you need to grow some more you need to develop some more you need to become like Jesus some more is anybody in the church with me today you need to be transformed you need to be can I talk to somebody today he wants to take you home but he can't take you home yet because you are not matured yet so watch your preacher watch your preacher watch your preacher every day I go I said to them what is the goal for the baby are you ready for me you got to work with me now because I'm about to enjoy this thing all by myself is anybody with me I said what is the goal for the Elizabeth they said she needs to get to four pounds am I talking to you she was born two pounds 11 ounces she needs to get to five pounds can I talk to you today to five pounds watch me every day that I go the first thing that I look for is whether or not they have weighed her yet you're not with me tonight I say you're not with me today and if they have weighed her I now look to see how much weight she has grown is anybody in the church with me and if the thing is the same as it was yesterday I then go and say to them you what you have not weighed her all morning well yes we did but she did not add any weight is anybody in the church with me and I would go and I would say baby girl come on you need to work with daddy can I talk to the church and I'd go and encourage her and say man you need to eat some more food so you can grow and when we go she has grown one ounce until she started growing two ounces I don't think the church is with me until she started growing three ounces am I talking to somebody today ladies and gentlemen and she keeps growing she's not growing a whole lot she's growing incrementally but it doesn't matter she's still growing am I talking to anybody in the church today she started taking a little and then she take a little bit more and then she started taking a I wish I had a church today is anybody in the church with me can I talk to you who was about to get baptized when you come to Jesus you will not be perfect but you're gonna grow I thought can I talk to somebody I say you're gonna grow can I talk to church you're gonna grow a little and then a little bit more and then a little bit more and then a little bit more is anybody in the church with me today and you're gonna grow a little bit more you're gonna understand a little food till you understand some more till you can handle some more am I talking to anybody in the church and it doesn't matter how little you grow as long as you grow can I talk to somebody today so don't let nobody discourage you this is between you and Jesus can I talk to somebody today and when you have grown enough God will put in his appearance and he will take you home to glory I stop by to tell somebody that God wants to take somebody home but we're still not grown enough